What's up guys, we're going to be running a cross-site scripting attack. We'll be solving this lab, reflected cross-site scripting in HTML context with all tags blocked except custom ones. And that's really the key to solving this lab. It's not especially difficult, it just requires awareness of the existence of what we can refer to as custom tags. So we know that HTML comes with a predefined set of tags, but you can also create your own HTML tags known as custom tags. Let's take a look at the lab and we'll see why that's important. So the vulnerability is here on the search feature of the blog. And the idea is if we try and inject script tags or some kind of HTML element, we'll see that it's not possible. When we run search, we get this JSON response tag is not allowed. This is actually the web application firewall intervening and preventing our HTTP request from even hitting the web app in the first place. And we can try this with other tags. It's not just script tags. Even if we were to try something like a really simple H1 HTML tag and click search, once again, we can see it's blocked by the web application firewall. So this is where custom tags come in. Just because all standard HTML tags are blocked does not mean that custom tags are necessarily blocked. And that's what you find with this lab. Now, typically custom tags are used with a hyphen. So they'll look something like this, custom hyphen tag, lowercase. And if we click the search here, we'll see that we don't get intercepted by the firewall. We actually get a response from the server. If we inspect this particular element, what we find is that we've been able to inject into the page. What that means is we can start adding attributes to that custom HTML tag, and that might allow us to find a cross-site scripting attack vector. So as proof of concept, let's create a custom tag and we'll give it an on mouse over attribute just to see if we can get some arbitrary JavaScript to be initiated here. So we'll say on mouse over equals, and we're just going to say alert cross-site scripting. Now for this lab, we actually want to flash document.cookie to the page. But for now, we'll just go for a proof of concept. So let's close our custom tag. Let's search for this. Let's once again inspect the DOM. In fact, I'm trying to right click on the element to choose inspect DOM. But as you can see, every time I try and do that, I get the cross site scripting alert popped up to the page. So what we can see here is that this custom element has once again been injected into the DOM. It now has a listener for on mouse over. And when we do mouse over the element, we see that the JavaScript alert pops up to the page. So at the moment in the URL, we have a legitimate cross-site scripting attack link. The only issue is even if we were to get this into the hands of the victim, they still have to visit the page and then mouse over a very specific part of the page. Cross-site scripting attacks are always better if they are automatic. We want to try and make this attack automatic. Okay, so we're going to do custom tag. Instead of on mouse over, we're going to have on focus. We'll make use of our JavaScript alert here as well. Instead of XSS, we're going to alert document.cookie. In fact, doesn't need to be in double quotes, document.cookie. And in order to make this attack automatic, we're going to provide two additional attributes here. The first is an ID attribute. That allows us to focus on a specific element from the URL by making use of the hashtag. So that's a feature in HTML that sometimes you might refer to as bookmarking. So if we give this element an ID of X, if we then craft a URL and at the trailing end of that URL, we have hashtag X, it means that the page is going to jump to the specific element that's being referenced. Now that's not quite the same as saying that we're focusing on that element. Just visiting a certain location on the page is not the same as focusing. In fact, only certain types of elements can be focused on. We think, for example, of something like a form input. We can obviously focus on that. And the way that HTML works is we can often cycle through form inputs, making use of the tab key. There's actually a short example of this on the MDN web docs. And if you take a look at this HTML output here, as we click the tab key, we can cycle through tabbable elements. But notice not everything is tabbable. We've actually skipped this element that's describing itself as not tabbable. But interestingly, two of those inputs were form inputs, but we were able to tab onto an element that's not form input. And that's because this particular element is making use of the tab index attribute. And this allows the element to be focusable. So we also want to provide a tab index attribute to our custom tag. 
we'll say tab index equals, and we're going to give it the value one. And let's now close our element. So let's click search. Let's now inspect our element on the page just to see if everything's worked correctly. So we have a custom tag with the ID of X on focus. It's going to call alert document cookie, and it has a tab index of one. Let's now revisit the URL because obviously the idea with cross-site scripting attack in terms of at least reflected cross-site scripting attack, we want to get this particular link into the hands of the user. Another thing we can of course do is if we can get the victim to visit an attacker controlled domain, we can execute JavaScript on that domain, which redirects the victim's browser to this specific URL. But either way, the user or the victim needs to be making use of this URL, either by clicking on a link or being redirected by malicious JavaScript. The only thing we need to do here is to add the hashtag we described on the end and put hashtag X. Let's click enter here and see when we visit this URL, we immediately get document.cookie reflected to the page. It's blank in this case, but we can see that the cross-site scripting attack is working. So what's happening here is the hashtag X is causing the page to immediately focus on that element with the ID of X and it can be focused on because we made use of that tab index attribute. So here is our malicious payload or URL. Let's copy that. And we're going to now move on over to Web Security Academy's exploit server. So remember how we said one method of executing this attack is by getting the victim to visit an attacker controlled server. Now, obviously we can't steal the victim's cookie in that context because the victim won't be sending his cookies for another domain to the attacker controlled domain, but we can execute JavaScript on the victim's browser. And one of the things we can do with JavaScript is redirect the victim's browser to the malicious URL. So that's what we're going to do here. So pretending this is a HTML body, we're going to need some script tags. We can simply say location equals and we can paste our malicious URL that we've just created. We can then end the script tags. So simple idea is victim visits the attacker controlled domain. Attacker controlled domain runs some JavaScript on the victim's browser. That JavaScript changes the victim's browser location to the malicious URL. Let's choose the option deliver exploit to victim. And you can see, congratulations, you solved the lab. So overall, I don't think this lab was too difficult. However, it did require understanding of custom tags in HTML. And it also required a little bit of creativity in terms of getting the cross-site scripting attack to be executed automatically. And we needed a basic understanding of what makes an element focusable in HTML and making use of that tab index attribute. All right, hope it was helpful. Thanks very much for watching, guys.